Good morning, my friends. <clears throat> I hope you're doing great this morning. Oh, you need to bear with me. Just before I, I got on here, I caught a bit of a, I don't know, a sneeze festival over here. <laughs> Something caught my nose and it's my near summer too and I sneezed for days and it was great. But thank the Lord we got over that and I was able to, yeah, I'm, I'm able to start talking a little bit again. <clears throat> And you know, this had me thinking that some sometimes when when I come and sit down and God brings me something that I feel I want to talk about, it's it's not always something new or a new realization of something, but merely something that's been around for maybe even a long time, sometimes a short time, but sometimes even a long time, that I've never really noted down. And I feel that's a lot what these messages are, at least for me, is that I'm is is that God's busy making me a, a yearly diary that I get to come and listen to. After, after we've done this year, yes, there will be new content, of course, after the year that we'll still be doing as the Lord guides me. But this is a particular thing that, that God is busy with over here. You know, God's doing a thing. But in the thing, He does many things. And as I said, I love it when God does a thing. But this, morning one's, uh, this morning's one is, is quite interesting for me. And it's, and it's such a nice one, really. It's like, you know, when you, when you grow your relationship with the Lord, everything that might start to uh, it might start in your mind but the closer i feel that i get to the lord the quicker any kind of thought that's not that i don't know what to do whether it is something that i need to do whether it is maybe ill thoughts or perspectives about people and things whenever something like that creeps in the more i grow with God, the quicker it gets shifted back to God, if that even makes sense. But it's for, it's so, you know, to ask God what's going on, to ask God to explain it to me, to, I always ask God, or I'll be, Lord, what's going on? Lord, if there's somebody you can send me, then send me somebody to explain it to me. Lord, help me understand this. Lord, I feel like this, I don't understand why. And instead of spending my day upset because somebody upset me for argument's sake, I go to God and I go, Lord, why did I get upset? And God shows me, that's why you got upset, John, because you made it about you and it's not about you, For as an example. I'm like, oh, so I have absolutely no reason to be upset. Cool. Thank you, Lord. All yours then. You deal with that. Yeah, it doesn't look like something I can deal with. Or if it's something I can deal with, or maybe I need to need to ask that person for forgiveness because maybe I reacted in an ill manner toward that person. So... It, it's for me it's not a big thing to say sorry when when god shows me i'm wrong um because man can't do that I, I think many a times we've heard and we've actually said that do you ever win an argument because even when you win you don't win because now you've slapped the other person on the ego and the pride and they walk away upset with you anyway so you haven't won anything you've just maybe made a new enemy or a foe or a whatever but you didn't really win you know so um, the maturity that I, that I feel that, that flows when, or that starts coming in when maybe there's somebody at work or in a group that you're at, or at church even, that doesn't, you, you, your perspective is that this person doesn't like you, never have anything good to say about you and you have no idea how to go about it. Maybe it's even sometimes people that are in a, a position of authority above you. So you can't just directly approach them and talk to them like you want because we need to respect the authority that is placed be above us because it doesn't matter what our perspective are of these people, we're in e any area of life, it's still been placed there by God according to the word. So there's we've got to check our hearts in all these places. And this, this is where the maturity really kicks in for me when it comes to spiritual growth that to realize we need to go to God with us. And, um, you know, that <laughs> the moment that my mind starts wondering about these people is where, where I realize that the closer I live to the Lord and the closer I, the more I include God in the stuff that I do, the more I want to. And the, the quicker my mind actually kicks in, the, the, the earlier and, and, and the louder I almost hear the Holy Spirit that, telling me that, listen, ask me, ask you know, ask God, ask, ask me this. You, you're not, if you, you're breaking yourself down because you, you understand what I'm saying. My mouth seems a bit confused this morning. It's not keeping up with what I'm thinking. <laughs> Even though I've got a couple of notes over here, you know, it's great. 
Oh man, but I hope this is getting you know. But the Holy Spirit reminds me to ask Him first, to ask God first, with everything. Actually, the more I include God in everything, the more He reminds me to include God in everything. Um, the more I rely on the Lord with stuff, the more I ask God stuff, the more I, the more I do these things, the more I want to do these things. The more I ask God about stuff, the more I want to ask Him, because the answers that He gives is so much better than anything that I can come up with. I'll tell you that. If I had to really share with you how much worth I am without the Lord, I'll have to switch on the video. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, there'd be no video to take because there's, there's nothing to say then in, in, for me all my life, you know. But so the more I want, the more I talk to him, the more I ask God, the more I rely on God, the more I include God, the more I want to ask him and I want to include him and I want to rely on him really. And uh, it's definitely the best way I've found. I love the way that God does business, you know. I love the way that God does things because He does it in such phenomenal ways that we will remember. And and that's what's so great for us. And that's why nobody, I feel, ever forgets their testimonies because it's moments that God creates that you'll forever remember. He stretches us so far beyond ourselves. But in this, I realized something this morning a new um is it, something that i learned when i was at at four trackers at, at school and i did, I did a few few years only in high school but this oh, we learned we learned a lot of survival stuff it was quite great a little bit of the history of, um, of of our country and of one of the cultures of south africa and whatever but you know one of the things that i learned there is that the moment that you think you're done and you can't anymore you can probably go about seven or ten or something times further or longer can't remember if they said seven or ten but the moment you think you can't anymore you can go so much further that's that's the thing and when god stretches us it's not because he's trying to be the bad guy here it's not because he's trying to be a spruce man he's not purposefully trying to break you down or anything he's trying to show you what's already in you he's trying to show you how he's already designed you he's trying to show you that you think you're done you're not even close to done you can go so much further and he needs to stretch us because that increases our boundaries it's like training for things man that's what these things are when god stretches us but it's it's for the fact that we can go so much further than sometimes we've ever thought possible and not only because he's designed us that way and that he's showing us part of our design or our whole design even but also because he's trying to show us of his power in us he's trying to show to me let listen my power is in you you can do this and the more i go to god with everything the more god also changes my heart towards everything Things that I struggle with, areas and spaces that I struggle in, any of these things. You know, so with with, with this of His design that's already in us, we've, we, we know that Genesis 1 says God created us in His image and to His likeness. Now, if you're also created to His likeness, this also includes for me the job that God has for you, the purpose that He designed you for, you, the, the stuff that He put in you, the skills, the abilities, the talents, all the stuff that He's put in you. Is also to his likeness for that job so when you think you can't anymore yet your design is to overcome whatever is this thing here in front of you he's just trying to show you that it's already in you i've already designed you i've already won number one so you're already overcoming in me but with my power in you you can overcome and you can go even further than than if you understand what i'm trying to say this with, with this this morning. And then I, then I stumbled upon 2 Corinthians 3, and it says, And we all, who with unveiled faces, contemplate or reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So when we live with God and for God, and we increase Him, uh, we include him in everything and we get him to increase in our lives because as Paul writes, it should be less of me and more of him, which in turn gets me to a place that I'm really, really striving for, that I want to have all of God. I want all of him and none of me because the me is such a selfish 
person most of the time that only thinks of himself. When the Bible teaches us to serve others, when Jesus came to serve others. You know, this is also because the more we are around certain things, the more we get shaped by those things. Ever realize if you're in a conversation where people swear a lot, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I realize it is for me still. And I'm still working on that because there's certain things that still needs to break in me, still th certain things that God still needs to shape in me. But whenever I'm around certain people at certain times, the more those people swear, the more I all of a sudden start swearing. It's very weird. It's interesting. And the moment you're around business people, the moment you're around business people over here is that... Um, when they start talking about their ideas and their things and their lives and their businesses and their business ideas and things, all of a sudden I also start thinking differently about the situations and the things that's in my life and going around on in my life and going on around my life. Ever realize that? And then I realize the more I get around certain people, godly people, the more they start talking about God and certain stories that they share and certain things out of the words that they share, the more they share things like that, the more I... Um, Start thinking differently about the word. The more the word starts coming out, things that I don't know, things that I don't remember, that all of a sudden now lifts up in my mind. It's the craziest things, and I love it when these things happen. So then, just hang on a second. Quick pause over there. Sorry, just give me a second. And, um, you know, but as soon as the note, the, I remember the, the <clears throat> let me just get my words back to my mouth. The moment we, we get closer to God, we move closer to God, all of a sudden that person that just lashed out at me at the office because of something that wasn't really even a thing, and I walk away upset with this person, the moment I go to God with this thing, God shows me and transforms my mind and shifts my thoughts and changes my heart towards that person because he shows me, but this person is dealing with some hurt over here. And it's a defensive mechanism that we all tend to have from time to time. We're designed by God, for God, and to serve God and others, my friends. You know, Romans 12, 10 tells us that we must be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. If you honor other people above yourself, if they lash out at you, the first thing should be that we eventually learn is that why is this person acting this way? Why? What's going on with them? Are they okay? And most of the time, people like that are not okay. And yes, we get emotional, we get upset and stuff sometimes. Things happen. But you know, and, and I know that you're facing stuff as well in these moments. You're also dealing with some hurt and stuff. But I just don't want you to be one of those people that succumb to the hurt, that fall to the hurt, that end up dealing with it in so many of the wrong ways that I see so many people in the world do these days. And I want you to know that if you, I want you to be one of those people that if you, if you do get affected and transformed by something, let it be by the Lord. Run to the Lord and, and realize, I want you to realize that the more you go to the Lord, if you at some point don't realize that you want to do these things with the Lord more, then, then maybe, I don't know, maybe we're not doing it 100% correctly yet. But the more I go to the Lord with stuff, the more I want to go to the Lord with stuff. And, and I just want you to know that it does definitely work. Yes, it also hurts sometimes because it hurts to clean wounds, if you understand what I'm saying. It does. It does hurt a little bit. But if you're going to be transformed by something, my friend, the best changes, the best transformer, the best potter you can have is the Lord. 